Hello, welcome to Chair Yoga. Today we are going to explore shoulders, neck, hips, low back, the whole shebang, even a little balance work at the end. If your chair is a little too tall, have a pillow or a box nearby where you can make sure that your thighs are parallel to the ground. Begin seated. Sit tall. Roll your shoulders a few times. And just notice what you're feeling in your shoulders and your neck. Reverse the roll. Bring your shoulders down, press them back, and then bring them up. Exaggerate the roll. Get more movement into your shoulders. Think of peeling your shoulder blades off your back as you press them back. You may even start to notice some warmth happening because you're using a lot of muscles here, upper back especially. Bring your shoulders up to your ears, press them back, slide them down. Notice the little stretch across your chest. Beginning with neck controlled articular rotations. Tuck your chin to your chest. Bring your chin over to right clavicle or collarbone. Move your chin up and just over your shoulders, squaring your shoulders forward. Slowly lift your chin. Lift your chin up to the ceiling. Bring your chin over to the left. And slowly graze the clavicle. Tuck your chin to your chest. Let's do that again. Sit tall with your spine, but keep your chin tucked. Bring your chin over to the right. Feel the stretch just down the side of your neck. Lift your chin. You're going to find immediately that your range of motion has become slightly greater. Your chin over to the left. And grazes the collarbone. Tuck your chin. Two rounds to the left. Bring your chin over to the left. And think of driving your chin over your shoulder. Lift your gaze, lift your chin, tilt your head back at the top. This motion is help, helping to build strength around the vertebra in your neck, as well as opening up the muscles that control the head movement when you're looking down and forward. Graze your right collarbone, bring your chin center. One more time around. Really paying attention to how this feels. And about playing just the edge, the edge of where you can move without pain, but with a little bit of challenge. Bring your chin over to the right collarbone. Tuck your chin. Keep your chin tucked. Keep your chin where it is. Straighten your spine. You'll feel the stretch down your back. If you'd like, bring your hands to the back of your skull and add a little bit of pressure. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Hold your breath. And then slowly exhale. Let's do that twice more. You'll feel a very um, interesting stretch down your upper back. Your lungs inflating are helping to get rid of all the tightness that exists. your chin tucked, but bring your hands to your waist. Gaze forward, gaze up. A big nod. Tucking your chin, gaze forward, gaze up. Let's add on. Tuck your chin, gaze forward, gaze up, open your jaw. It's like a silent scream. Jut your jaw forward, close your teeth, 
tilt your head back a little bit more, feel the stretch on, in your throat. There's some muscles there that can get chronically tight from looking down. Gaze forward and release from all the neck. Moving into your trunk. Sit tall. Take your right hand onto the chair of your arm. Stretch your left arm out to the side. Lift up your arm and tilt your body to the right. Keep your chin lifted, keep your chest lifted. Press your left hip down into the chair, anchor there. Every time you inhale, reach away from your body, stretching through your ribs. As you exhale, your body will naturally relax a little bit more to the right. You'll feel a lot of action going on in your waist. The next time you inhale, straighten up. Bring your left arm down and switch sides. Right arm goes up. Lift your arm up. Use the chair of the arm to tilt. Feel your right sit bone down. Inhale, stretch and release. release. As you exhale, your body will naturally relax. Your breathing is so important, it's like medicine. Take it deeper, down into just below your navel. Every time you breathe like this, you're changing your biochemistry. Let's move a little bit side to side. Straighten up, bring your right arm down. Lift left, tilt. Inhale, straighten up, touch your palms. Second side. Every time you touch your palms, take a breath in. Right down to your navel. And every time you side bend, exhale. Remember to feel your sits bone down into the chair. Think of that grounding action. What that's doing, it's allowing your spine to move side to side and for your ribs to open. You have muscles between each rib and when they're tight, your breathing's restricted. When your breathing is restricted, you create quite a loop. Stress hormone increases. When stress hormone is present in your body, it can be good sometimes when you're trying to get stuff done, but when it's chronically in your body. We learn from Western science that cortisol is present in heart disease, in patients suffering from anxiety and depression, in patients suffering from diabetes and cancer. Breathe, it's like medicine. Last time to the right, last time to the left. Not only was that great for cardiovascular system, lift your arms up, you also created strength around your core. Raise your right arm up. Reach behind and look behind until your arm can't go down anymore. Look up, reach up. Look forward, reach forward. Second side. Inhale, raise left. Reach behind, look behind. So let's continue with this motion. What you're practicing is called functional mobility. These are the kinds of movements that you need to do in your time on this earth. Lifting, reaching twisting. But if you do it suddenly, when your body's not ready, you can injure yourself. Inhale, reach. Exhale, close. Adding a little bit of tempo. Inhale, reach and twist. 
exhale, close. And if you'd like use, to use the pressure of your hand to the inner thigh to help you twist more, you can. See if you're looking at something that you didn't see before. Look behind, check it out. Look up and forward. Let's do one more time on the left. Adding a hold. Raise your right arm up. Take the twist. Grasp onto the back of your chair. Bring left hand onto the arm of the chair. Keep your knees forward. Never forcing a twist. Inhale, straighten your spine. As you exhale, tone your navel to your spine and look over your shoulder. Perhaps you hear some popping and clicking. Inhale, straighten your spine. Keep your gaze over your shoulder. Exhale, twist. Last breath in. Notice what you're looking at. Is it different? It just tells you how much range of motion you've just gained. Slowly unwind. Take a little counter twist to the left, just a little bit. <clears throat> Face forward. Let's do second side. Inhale, raise your left arm, big twist. Hook your arm around the back of your chair. Take your right hand, grasp the arm. So stay where you're comfortable. Stay where it feels sweet and healthy. Never going too far in twists. Inhale, straighten your spine, your nose, and notice your chest lifting. As you exhale, tone your belly and twist. Knees stay forward. Three more rounds. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, tone your belly, gazing over your shoulder. Notice what you're looking at and see if that changes. Two more times on your own. Slowly unwind and take a little bit of a twist, a baby twist to the right. Coming forward, let's get into chest and upper back. Lift your arms in front of you with your palms facing in. Open your arms wide, press them back. Squeeze your shoulders together. Bring your hands together, tuck your chin. Inhale, open, lift your chest, lift your gaze. Exhale, touch and tuck your chin. Let's do this a few more times. And as you open, think of squeezing your shoulder blades together. That's a lot of upper back strength. As you touch, you're stretching the same part, the upper back. Slow down the movement and exaggerate the movement. Reach and hunch your upper back. And when you open, lift your chest, lift your gaze. If you have any shoulder pain, always honor that. Gaze forward, keep your arms wide. Notice how your cardiovascular system has just been affected. Lift your arms, bend your elbows, touch your fingers above your head. Press your arms back, slide your elbows down, bring your elbows to your side. Press your hands back. This is externally rotating the humerus bones, really important for your posture. With bent elbows, reach up above your head, touch. Press your arms back and slide your elbows down. This is building scapular stabilization, this, these two movements together. Pressing your elbows back is igniting the muscles just underneath your shoulder blades. They're little. It also opens up 
the pecs. They're tight. And when they're tight, you are rounded like the letter C. That is not a good way to be for your back. Your head weighs about 10 to 12 pounds and it's tilted forward. That places a lot of strain on your upper back, low back, just messes with you. It also is a subliminal message. When you're hunched over your work or your play, that's being hunched over. And the subliminal message is um, that you're in a state of sadness, depression. You may not feel that way, but that's what the message is. Your body's sending your mind. Good, bring it down and notice how you feel. You should feel some, a little work in the back of the uh, shoulder blades and just breathe. Maybe closing your eyes and just sitting with yourself, meeting you where you are today. Knowing that you are enough. And beginning the process of understanding that where you were is not where you are. And it's not where you're going. Good. Opening your eyes. Let's practice um, the beginnings of eagle pose. This is a yoga pose that opens up all of your joints and squeezes the um, lymph nodes. Open your arms wide. That's great for your immune system. Take your right arm and cross it in front of your body. And then bring your left arm on top. So from this point, you can hug yourself. Or an option would be to press the backs of your hands together, backs of your wrists and hands together. Perhaps taking your lower hand, bringing it toward your nose, crossing your wrists and touching your palms. Now, if that sounds like a whole bunch of circus moves, then don't do it. Just touch the backs of your hands. But if you can do a double helix here, that's nice. That feels good for shoulders. So wherever you are, if you're hugging or touching or pressing, lift and lower your elbows a few times. This is great stuff for the shoulder joint. And just do what you can. Stay, meet it where you are. And maybe you're recovering from injury. And if that's the case, be gentle, be kind. Lift your elbows, press your hands forward, away from your face. If you're hugging yourself, just lift your elbows. And then bring hands toward your nose and away, just a few times. Good. Stay where you are, unwind your arms. Open your arms wide and let the blood flow back into the shoulders. Taking left arm, bring it across your body. Top it with the right arm. From here, you can hug yourself, touch the backs of the hands, or create the double helix. So whatever's working, go with it. Lift and lower. No matter where you are, this lifting and lowering is, is creating a mechanical process in the shoulder joint. It is stretching and strengthening. Lift your elbows, and if you're hugging yourself, stay right there. That's building strong shoulders. If your hands or fingers are pointing up, bring your thumb to your face and then press your hands away. Do that a few times. Keep breathing. Think of breath as feeding what's known as the parasympathetic response. That is a place of healing. That is a place of breathing and changing your biochemistry. Lots of endorphins begin to flow. Release open wide. Feel all of the blood flowing through your shoulders. Feels so good. Spread your hands little jazz hands, spread your fingers even more. 
and release. Notice how you feel. You probably have some stuff going on cardiovascularly. Good. Let's move to the second half of Eagle, starting with your right leg. If your feet are on a box and your knees are up, then place your feet on the floor. You can choose to cross your legs, cross your thighs tightly, no space. And if that doesn't work for knees, then maybe cross your shins, cross your ankles. Adjust your body in your seat. Once your legs are crossed, hold on to the arms of your chair. Keep a, back, a flat back and tilt forward. Right away, you'll feel a stretch in the outer right hip and the low back. That's, that's nice. And then come back. Keep moving forward and back. And what you'll start to notice is your body gets a little bit more range here, a little bit farther forward. So if you don't feel anything here, an alternative for you would be to slide your ankle onto your thigh in a figure four shape. You can hold on to your leg, go forward and back, and I guarantee you'll feel it then. Back and forth, you decide what you need. About three more times. Just telling the body it's about time to rest and hold. Let your head go. Let your arms go if you want, dangle here. Keep breathing, you are enough. Your path does not define you, it has prepared you. And maybe that's something to wrestle with right now. But you are not created to live in the past. Slowly roll up, roll your shoulders around, and let's go to second side. Uncross right from left, and then left on right. You can do any variation that suits your body. Shift around, get comfortable in your chair, holding on to the arms just for the first few motions, forward and back, oh, anywhere from eight to 10 times. So when you do this, you're creating this conversation with your mind and your body. Mind is telling body, okay, we're doing this. Body says, okay, I, I'm getting ready. I feel ready. And that's um, the whole concept between, be, behind the functional mobility. It's mobility that allows you to go out and do the activities and things in, at home that you need to do without injury. Your body's prepared. So ready for a longer hold, you can come to any variation of the hip opening you'd like, a wider stance or still with uh, legs crossed. Come to the forward fold and dangle. Let your head be heavy, let your arms be heavy. Soften your brow and take deep breaths in through your nose. Exhale through your nose. When you don't pay attention to your breath, it tends to get short and shallow. Belly should be pressing as it expands with the breath. And slowly come up. So stay with your legs crossed. Let's practice eagle. Close your legs tightly together. Open your arms to a T. Take left arm in front, cross right on top. Here you can hug yourself, press your hands together, or create a double twist. Option, forward fold. Let your head go. So here you are compressing all of the lymph nodes. You're, you're shutting off some blood flow, which is a nice flush for you. 
When you come out of the pose, let your head go, close your eyes. Two more breaths here. And slowly come up. Uncross arms, uncross legs, open your arms wide, press your arms back, look up. Second side, cross your right leg over left. Bring right arm, top it by left. Hug, touch, or cross again. Squeeze everything center like you're holding on to a tree for dear life. If it feels good, forward fold. How is your breathing? When you're forward folded, your lung operation, feel, the mechanics of your lungs, you can really feel the work. Inhaling deeply, add the breath hold. Feel your upper back stretch as the lungs fill. Breathe like you're training for an opera. And athletes and singers do train on how to breathe properly. Slowly come up. Unwind, feel the flush of blood. Uncross. Reach back. Grasp onto the arms of the chair back, lean forward like you're in the movie Titanic. I think Rose hung on like this. Lift your chest, maybe look up. A nice stretch for chest and um, heart. Heart space is opening. Good. And release. So moving into the final little bit of class. Two options. Uh, this is a series called Drinking Bird. It's, it's great for letting all of the, the stuff out of your body. If you prefer to sit, you can stay seated, no problem. But if you're ready to stand, see if you can, if you can stand up. I know you can stand up. Move to the side of your chair or in front of your chair, anywhere there's room. Once you found your spot, raise your arms up overhead, palms facing in, gaze up. Exhale, bring your arms down, bend your knees, look at your knees, reach behind you. Inhale, stand up, reach up, look up. Exhale, bend your knees, reach behind you. You are going to continue with these motions, adding on a little bit more depth, a little bit more reach, and as you come down, maybe a little deeper. This is building strength through your low body. This is opening up the front of your body, which can get tight from all of your activities and your work. You're getting the vascular system going. That is so important, keeping your veins. The word I'm looking for is elastic keeping the veins elastic and moving, move it or lose it. That is truly the case in your body. Moving in a way that's kind, you don't have to go down very far, you can go down as far as you want. Let's add for the last two. As you reach for the sky, think of lifting your heels off the ground, maybe just a half an inch, don't have to go high. Bring your heels down, squat, reach behind you. One more time, as you lift your arms, raise them to the sky, lift your heels up, let yourself wiggle and wobble, that's ankle strength you're building, nice. Drop your heels, drop your arms and see how you feel. Maybe close your eyes, deep breath in. And a slow exhale. Balance. Holding on to the back of your chair, most of the weight in your right leg or your outside leg, depending on how you're standing. So the leg that's farthest away from your chair, that's where the weight will go. Stand tall. Bring a soft bend to your knees. You don't need to put a lot of force to practice balance. Lift your inside foot and just sweep it back and forth. 
See how that is. See how your standing knee feels. Always paying attention. If you'd like to add a little flare, put your hand on your waist. Good. Kick your foot forward and just hover it. You're probably feeling some outer hip strength building. That's, that's perfect. Lift up. Practicing balance. Create a lighter hand on your chair. Just a little bit of lightness through your hand. And then keep three fingers on the chair. Maybe two fingers on the chair. Lift up your palm. Maybe one. Maybe none. Hold for three, two, one, and change. Shake it out. So that is not a big power move as you may see balance being. But did you notice the heat building in the outer hip? That's, a, that's perfect. Those are your outer hip rotators and they need that work. So changing sides any way you want. Place your hand on the back of the chair, stand tall, feel most of the weight on the outer leg, ground through your heel. Bring a soft bend to your knee that creates muscular activity, not bone and connective tissue grazing your inside foot just shift it back and forth this is destabilization of the hip and outer knee and ankle joints and keep your foot raised so you'll notice you're maybe an inch half an inch off the ground maybe you can even feel the ground underneath your heel stand tall three fingers on the chair Two fingers on the chair. Lift your palm off the chair. Keep your fingers down. Maybe one finger off the chair. Add the hand on your waist. Balance for three. You can always put your hand down. Two, one, and release. Shake it out. Fantastic. Let's end with some wrist and hand work wrist and hand work you're welcome to come to a seat i'll approach the camera a little closely so you can see what's going on create two fists stretch your arms so they are straight out from your shoulders bend your wrists but keep your elbows straight you'll feel a stretch through the forearms. These are muscles, extensors, that you use quite a bit in your work. Keep right wrist bent. Use your left hand, wrap it around your fists, and add a little bit of stretch here. Oh, you're surely going to feel it now. This is good if you want to avoid carpal tunnel or tennis elbow, golfer's elbow. Switching, create a fist on your left arm, bend your wrist, take your right hand, lock out your elbow, and then bring your fist closer to your body. Right here is what, what you're going for. Release and shake it out. Joint mobility in your hand. Face your palms, and then think of touching your fingertips to the very top of your palm, one after the other. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Depends on arthritis in your family, what your history is. So thumbs won't touch, but you can you can certainly bend them. Again, bending, trying to touch just the top of your palm. Maybe you're getting a little bit mobility here. Do one finger at a time. Sometimes the others want to join along, can't be helped. And now bend all 10, trying to touch the tops of your palms. It's sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Just be kind to yourself. This is wonderful for opening up the joints and staving off the effects of arthritis, bringing your fingernails together. 
Bring your thumbs to your chest. And never to the point of pain. Press your palms together. Elbows go out to your side. Thumbs draw down. Keep pressing palms together. If it's too much, don't do it. Stay and hold for three, two, one. And release. Shake it out. I want to thank you for joining Chair Yoga. Stay healthy and be well. Thank you.